Hello everyone, welcome to this video on design and analysis of algorithms. In this video, we'll learn about dynamic programming and its connections with Sanskrit prosody or chanda. I will mention the, the study material later, but I'll primarily follow the book by Jeff Erickson on algorithms. And even this book starts with Matra Vritta Chanda, one of the components of Sanskrit prosody. And so my lecture will be focused on Chanda Shastra. I'll start with how, how Sanskrit prosodists came to the notion of binary numbers and Fibonacci numbers, Pascal's triangles, etc. So let's start. So first let us start with Chanda Shastra. Chanda is very important in Indian context. In the tradition of Sriti and Suti, it was very important how to pronounce a particular shloka. So Chanda um, was instrumental in that. There is a quote by Rabindranath Tagore. He said that Chanda frees words from their bondage. The sitar is bound to its strings, but also gets melody from it. Chanda is that sitar bound to its strings, which can release the melody of words. Now for this lecture, I will primarily follow uh, some references of Chanda from this book by Prosody of Pingala by Kapil Dev Diveli. So Pingala introduced the combinatorial tools called Pratyas to study various possible meters in Sanskrit prosody. prosody. According to Kapil Dev Diveli and Shamlal Singh, this book, uh, they are saying that Pingala probably lived in around like 750 BC or before. He was probably the younger brother of Grammarian Panini. And uh, he was uh, probably in some, some place in Gandha region or North India. But Pingala gave Chanda Sutra. It's a Sutra a thread. It's very condensed. And there are a lot of Karika, the commentaries which came later by Bharata, Bharata Muni's Nakta Shastra, which was 100 BC, Brahma Gupta, Virahamka, Mahavira, Halayud, Halavid is from Karnataka, Hemachandra, who is the father of Gujarati language, a Jain Digambar saint, Narayan Pandit and so on. And we'll see the notion of binary system, binary numbers, Fibonacci number and Pascal triangles in their work. And even the Hemachandra's work, the latest, which I'm mentioning the list, except the Narayana Pandita Ganita Komudi is from 1150 AD. Now, all these works, if we think about binary numbers, in the, uh, in the European context, Leibniz is the father and he wrote this book called On the Binary Progression in 1679. And he introduced the algorithm to convert decimal into binary and binary into decimal. But already similar algorithms we'll see were present in Pingala's work more than 2000 years before Leibniz. And Fibonacci numbers we mentioned, uh, it's uh, related with golden ratio, which is observed in nature. And Fibonacci they wrote this book called Liber Abaki, and he introduced a method called Modus Indoram, the method of the Indians, and also Hindi Arabic numeral system. He talked about Fibonacci numbers, but this is 1202 AD, which was even 50 years after Hemachandra's work. So according to many mathematicians like Manjul Bhargava, we should call Fibonacci numbers as Hemachandra numbers. And then Pascal came up with this Pascal triangle, a combinatorial object in 1654. And these, all these objects were, were discovered by Indians and elsewhere, also in China, much before this era. So now let's go a bit deep into Chandra. In Chanda, we have something called Pad, which is a quarter, which is regulated by something called Akshar, which is syllable. It's similar to English syllable, but in Sanskrit, I'll define what is Akshar. And there is, um, basically, Akshars are atomic unit. There is no, it's indivisible unit in some way. It's one vowel or some vowel with one or more consonants preceding it. So think of uh, a word like Akshar. Then A is one Akshar. Sha is another Akshar and Ra is another Akshar or, or Guru or Lagu. La is one Akshar and Gu is another Akshar and so on. So the definition, there are two types of Akshar primarily. One is Lagu and one is Guru. Lagu are vowels like A, E, Rasha, E, Rasha, U, Ri, Li, which are short. For example, Ka or Ki, these are short vowels. So this, this Lagu um, uh, syllables or Lagu Akshar, they are either used separately as a as vowel, saravan, or it is used with one or one or more con consonants or vanjan varna. So ka, ki, rashai, or ku, rashau, these are short syllables or, short, or lagu, akshay. And in case of guru, the vowels are long, like a, dirgha i, dirgha u, 
a o e o o and if these vowels are uh, or sharavan are used separately or they are used with one or more vanyan varna consonants then it's long for example ka because of a or dirgha e ki that is guru there are further rules i call these two rules l1 and g1 there are further rules sometimes a short vowel can become a guru swar guru akshar if the vowel is followed by some anus anuswar for example tom or gam or visarga like ta or ga or if the vowel is followed by a conjunct consonant the yukta varna like bandha here ba is followed by a yukta varna so ba will also be a guru swar because it's not a ba but ban the, the uchcharan is like ban and the final uh, final syllable final akshar can also be guru so now let's look at kalidasa's famous avigyan shakuntalam slok and let's try to see what kind of guru and lahus akshar comes in this in this phrase in this shlok so it says ya ya is a sister guru from this rule srishti because of the yukta varna following sri it's a guru g4 rule t it is following a visarga so again g3 then srashtu sra stu there is a yukta varna so it's g g4 then two is lagu rashavu then again a ra g1 um srishtu radha da is uh, guru again because of a then bahati all these are lagu a uh, a uh, and rashi then vidhi kutang all are lagu again tam is guru because of g2 ya g1 again then haviriya again l1 g4 g1 cha lagu and hotri is g1 g1 so you can verify this um so this this you can verify for all four lines it is written in this particular pattern that g g g then g l g then g l l then l l l then l g g then l g g and l g g if this is this is written in uh, devanagari script such is also you written in multiple other scripts in in eastern part of india it was in eastern nagari script or bengali script as well or assamese bengali script so that is here you can also try to use the same rules in in this if you you are not able to read devanagari so in this case each line has same number of akshar 21 in this case and we call this varna vritta chhanda so in varna vritta it's uh, every line has same number of syllables so it's a bengali example by rabindranath tagore number of syllables uh, akshar is same chitta jeta bhay shunno uchcha jeta shir gyan jeta mukto jeta grihero prachi so if i look, uh, look at this again chi is one ta is one j is one tha is one and so on so there are 14 akshar in each of these lines now one can ask a question that how to generate different padas using n akshar and this was the algorithm or method by pingal so let me explain what he said so how to generate different meters having n syllables so first one is dwiko glo so for only n equal to 1 there are two options you can either use g as one akshar or l for n equal to 2 what you do is mix such that you mix how do you mix you take so this is sutra so there is a karika which mentions in detail but you take the previous one gl you copy it here and then repeat it here and then you mix you use 2g and 2l and the same method you follow for n equal to 3 and continue so in n equal to 3 you take the part from n equal to 2 and copy it and copy it and then mix so half of them will be g and half of them will be l and this is defining something called ganas which is three akshar patterns and this is heavily used in poetry now if you look at this patterns we all, now we already know that okay there are n number of bits there are 2 to the power n possible ways to generate binary numbers but it is coming from this fact as well so if you look at this numbers g g g and this represent g by 0 and l by 1 we'll get the numbers as 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 110 and so on if we take a mirror image then we get this numbers which is binary numbers from 000 to 111 the reason it's uh, opposite because in in binary numbers when you write numbers the most significant digit, digits 
comes to the left. Whereas when we write, we write from left to right. That's why the, the, it looks like a mirror image, but it's the same thing. And he also designed two algorithms, Nasta and Uddista, which converts decimal to binary and binary to decimal. For example, if I tell you it is LGL, which number sutra is a sixth sutra? Uh, or uh, sixth pattern, sorry, so not sutra, sixth pattern. Uh, from LGL, you can compute that. Or if I tell you, okay, what is the fourth pattern? LLG. There's a formula to compute that, which is basically conversion of decimal to binary and binary to decimal. In, in this Varna Vritya, or where the number of syllables or akshars are same in each line, one can also ask the question, a more combinatorial question, which leads to binomial coefficient or Pascal's triangle, that given n syllables, how many ways we can arrange k lagu and n minus k guru, which is n choose k. And I followed this book by Chandrahas Halai and also his videos and many other YouTube videos on these topics, which talks about these things in detail. And one point is, it is not only in India, it's also discovered elsewhere in the world. These are very fundamental mathematical topic. For example, in China, this is young v triangle from 1303, the same notion. So I'll not go into detail of Pascal triangle, but if you're interested, just read about this. Uh, I'll post some materials in the comments. The next type of chanda are more interesting, in my opinion, and it's also something which will lead to dynamic programming, are called matra vritta. Here we are not focusing on the akshar, but on the matra, how many units of time you need. So in this case, lagu is one unit or one matra and guru is two unit or two matra. So lagu takes less time or one unit to pronounce it. Guru takes more time, two units to pronounce it. So if you have a, uh, have some words where each line has same amount of matra, then you will need similar amount of time to pronounce it and the similar pattern, which will, will be interesting. So there are several types of chanda, which is mentioned, matra samak, padakulak, apatalika and vaitalia, etc. In, in Pingala's book. But uh, if you look at the Chanda here, it's different from Aksha, uh, from Varnavritta. So in this case, uh, there are total 16 matra, 2 plus, so the symbol, S type symbol, it means Guru and 1 means Lahu. So 2 is Guru, 2 is Guru, 1 is Lahu. If you sum this, we'll get 16 matra, but number of Aksha is 10. And then some other next line, the Aksha becomes 9. nine but matra is still 16. So these are matra vritta chanda. Vritta means repetition or circle. So it's same pattern repeats. And uh, uh, in matra vritta, it, it sound is good. The rhythm is good because it's the same number of matra. Akshars can be, are, are not the main component here. Now one might ask the question that given n matras or bits, how many ways can we generate this? Now, this in mathematics, this will be the question that given L equal to 1 and G equal to 2, how many ways we can obtain LG sequences such that their sum is N? If you have N equal to 1, there's only one option. You can only use L, say so N equal to 1. If you have N equal to 2, you can either use 1 G or 1 Guru and or 2 Lagu. So MN equal to 2. So MN is number of ways to generate N matras. N equal to 3, there are 3 options, LLL, LG, GL. N equal to 4, there are 5 options. Now, for small numbers, it's fine. But if I give you, tell you N equal to 20, how do you find it? And that was a question they also encountered, Pingal also encountered in his work. And uh, the pattern he noticed was, if I use N matras, there are two ways to generate them. The last matra, last could be L or Lahu, or last two could be Guru. And then once we fix that lagu, we can recurse on the remaining n minus one. Or if we fix, focus, uh, if we fix the guru, we can focus on the remaining n minus two. And that was the first recursion. Mn number of ways to generate n matra is number of ways to generate n minus two plus number of ways to generate n minus one matras. And you need a base case for base. We'll use m zero equal to m one equal to one. So m one is one already we saw or, and for uh, we use base equal to m0 equal to 1. And Fibonacci came to the same notion. He used slightly different base. He used m0 equal to 0. But otherwise, it's same. And asked the same question. And he got this number called Fibonacci number. So this was the first recursion. In the next lecture, 
we'll see Viranka's algorithm where he gave an iterative algorithm how to find these numbers. So in this part of the video, I'll end with a couple of comments. So first one is why am I talking about Chanda Shastra? So for students, one thing I want to highlight is it's very important to know other subjects apart from computer science. For example, we got a couple of stories. One is Steve Jobs. So he was studying mostly science and engineering, but then he took a course on calligraphy. And the aesthetics of writing, handwriting, and other notions of aesthetics um, that he learned from the course was extremely helpful. He has mentioned many times in the development of iPad or, uh, or, or Apple's products. Second example, I know one personal example is uh, one of my friends, Jan Goodfellow. Uh, he is uh, one of the textbook authors of deep learning. We were co-interns at Bay Area during our uh, PhD. He mentioned he was studying biology and then he took a class in Stanford by Andrew NG on algorithms or on machine learning or computer science, and then he shifted to computer science. So taking a class or knowing a subject outside of your core area is helpful in the long run. And also nowadays everything is about LLMs and uh, large language models. So knowing language or grammar, for example, Panini's grammar, um, that's also got this uh, Panini, Chomsky, normal form, uh, compiler, it has also connection with grammars. So it's good to know different subjects. Um, second thing is uh, um, is about this map because today is 15th August. So I thought I will talk about uh, this map. So we talked about Pingala who was from northern part of India, Himachandra who is from Gujarat and Rajasthan region is a Jain Digambar saint. Bharat Muni again a Hindu saint who wrote Natta Shastra, Halayuth. Okay, this photo is missing here. Um, I, I just uh, had this Pascal photo, but I, I will add it in later. But Halayu is from Karnataka, from Bangalore. Um, and all these people were connected by the same thread, same Chanda, the uh, prosody. So, uh, and, and that's the culture of India, that though there are different religions, Jain, Buddhism, and so on, there are different languages. Uh, I mean, in the Bengali version, I mentioned about Bengali Chanda, and I mentioned a lot of Rabindranath's poem, poetry. So there are different languages. There's an inherent common theme. So in Vishnu Puran, there is a slope called Who are Indians? And it says that Uttaranga Samudrasya, Himadrasya Vadakshinam, Varshankat Bharatan Nama, Bharatiyatta Santati. So everyone who is living north of the sea, south of the mountain, they are Indians. So we should, in this independence day, we should go beyond the barriers of language and regions and religions, and we should unite, unite, uh, unite. And that's the theme of India, that's the culture of our country, unity in diversity. So happy Independence Day and thank you. In the next video, we'll learn about dynamic programming in more details and we'll not talk about that's the process anymore. Thank you.